All right, traders, good afternoon. This is Christian from Hertz Tribeca Trade Group, and it is Tuesday, April 7th. I was going to say Wednesday, but it is only Tuesday. Uh, don't forget, we do have Friday off today, so a uh, Friday off this week, so we have a shortened week. Uh, but uh, overall, I would say this was a reversal day today. Uh, really, really odd day today. Uh, indices ran into technical resistance today. Um, really odd because I went to bed last night and future S&P futures were down about 60 basis points. I was like, okay, that that makes sense. You know, after a big day yesterday, you know, I would expect some some type of digestion. I wake up this morning and I'm like, futures are up. S&P futures are now up three percent, and I was like. Ugh, I'm like this. This is not. <laughs> this is not going to be a good day. A to trade, and B. Uh, you know, it's just there wasn't any news. I, I didn't really understand. You know why the market was um, was was up that much into the open. And if we look to see where we kind of uh, ended up or, or started the day, uh, I was looking at this TAL, which uh, had some news after the close about some employee doing some wrongdoing, which probably is not going to sit well. But um, we basically ran into some some decent resistance, right? So let's uh, let's just bring up the S and P chart here for a second. Um, but basically, uh, you know, two things that kind of stood out like a sore thumb to me. One was we ran into the top of value, you know, right in the beginning of the day. Um, and I think there is still a one hour VPOC that's going to be lurking uh, up here. Uh, which is still up here, which is fine. So we can maybe leave this for later to uh, to take out. But um, here's what I sent this morning. Every morning, members, uh, I send out to, to members just a quick S&P note. And um, I mentioned price now at the top of value. So again, this is where we were pre-market. I said top of value resistance, uh, which were basically right there, 27.31. And um, my final thought was, uh, you know, price extending or extended in the overnight session. Um, I think the April value area one hour view box should provide some short term resistance. So this makes a very tricky setup for the for the day. So um, so interesting. You know, we didn't really break major trend, which is good for the day. But, um, you know, here here's what I did. You know, when I see something like this, I, I try to get out of risk. I really didn't have a lot going on in my trading account, as I mentioned in yesterday's video. You know, I took off a lot of risk yesterday. I thought yesterday was a nice gift. Um, you know, little did I know, and and I don't have a crystal ball. I don't I don't know what we're going to do on a day to day basis. Um, what I know is to kind of you know manage risk and and think about things in terms of risk, uh, you know, in terms of risk and, and probability, right? Uh, um, you know, what what favored today, uh, you know, coming in being up three percent, you know. Uh, so number one, like gap up days are difficult, right? And and we got a um, you know a real nice gap up day yesterday that had continuation to it, which we just don't normally see something like that. So two days, you know, it the risk reward you know s seemed skewed to the downside, and, and that's one of the things that I said as we get get going. And so I, I you know I know everybody likes to come in and and they like to look for new trades and so forth. Um, but sometimes you just have to kind of uh, take what the market gives you, and if it's if it's a difficult circumstance, you know, unless you're really comfortable with um, with shorting, you know, sometimes you just kind of have to sit on your hands, take profits, and and um, you know, live to fight for another day. Uh, so that again was my thought for the morning, and then what did I say a little bit later? Uh, I think I have some of my. Uh, maybe I didn't. Uh, it's probably in the regular chat, but I did mention that I, I just thought today. I said these gaps up are, are always difficult to trade, uh, more so, in my opinion, with everything going on. And then I I thought I wrote something else in here too, but maybe it just didn't. Maybe I, uh, it's in the regular chat, which is in the the group chat for the day. So um, that was my thought. Again, I don't know why I didn't copy it over here to the uh, commentary page, or maybe it went someplace else. But um, yeah, I, you know, so I again, I don't know why someone or whoever's you know bid up futures like that in the in the morning, but um, you just kind of have to respect that it's it's not the best risk to return setup, especially after you know um, basically what we experienced yesterday uh, in terms of price action. Uh, you know, again, I think it's important to look at uh, what happened from open to close um, spy. 
did I guess SPY did finish positive for the day up 10 basis points but gave back 3.2 percent small caps uh the only one that finished in the red using the etfs uh, versus the index was the Qs um, that finished in the red bonds um had a nice reversal you know we, we talked about that there was a one hour vpoc uh, that you could have traded off of for a little bit of a scalp trade um, there's the one hour chart there's the vpoc um, that is again virgin point of control from last week's value area that the remember when price doesn't pass through the point of control that leaves what we call a virgin point of control right price never went through this um, so um, it'll give you a little bit of a scalp and then you knew where to get out of it if you played it for a scalp which was the bottom of uh, value I did talk about this in the trading room I did not uh, put the trade on um, I think I just got uh, uh, what do you call it? I just got distracted with some other things going on but this is what and this is what you saw for the day not one sector uh, actually went up from the open um, everything uh, the materials were trying to hold on you know about two o'clock uh, they were they were green you know in terms of what they did from the open but you could see look at the software names we're down went down four and a half percent today um, that to me is like it's that's a pretty risk off day when you see something like that biotech as well um, finished down from the open four percent for the day 1.8 percent i can resort this just so that you can see what this looks like in terms of overall performance but um, that's just basically, you know, it's it's very difficult to deal with days like this. Uh, you know, again, unless you're very comfortable with shorting and fading things. But if we look at the perform the overall performance for the day, the bank still finished up crazy, right? Uh, K KBE finished up 3.7 percent, even though that gain. So it must have opened up well over 5 percent for the session. Uh, just very, very odd to see something like that. The solar names, they still finished up for the day, but were up at one point uh, well over 5 percent uh, on the open. Uh, it's just uh, uh, just really I'm running out of adjectives, I guess, to kind of describe it. But um, so here's what I did. I did try to fade things a little bit um, once I kind of saw the the writing on the wall. I, I there was a lot of Facebook calls, so I did try a little bit of Facebook. Um, they bought the weekly ones. I went into April's. So I'm not really comfortable holding those. Um, but yeah, I went into spy puts a couple times today, just kind of scalped. I didn't hold the whole day, which probably would have been the nice thing to do from basically uh, open to close. Um, and then what I did right at the end of the day, you could trade index options uh, till 415. And I added a little bit of um, an IWM hedge, something I haven't done in a while. But um, I just think with these reversal days, it's something I don't want to say is brewing, but um, I think after a decent move like we have, and we can look at IWM, um, I don't think that we're out of the woods, you know, in terms of volatility and so forth. And I think this does take some time, even though we're seeing some positives come out in terms of the Corona cases. I've gone over that the last couple of days. Those are continuing to kind of uh, move in the right direction in terms of the growth rate is slowing in total cases. Again, I think you have to look at total, my opinion, just looking at the stats i don't know anything else i'm just looking at the stats but uh, my opinion is you have to look at total cases right total new cases um i think anything else is kind of lagging right i don't like it's really depressing to talk about case uh deaths but i think deaths are are kind of a um i would say like a lagging indicator if you're using in in that sense again and i, I hate to kind of um, look at these things in terms of indicators because who, who wants to do that um, but we're just trying to figure things out on a day-to-day -day basis um, <clears throat> so I, I think really total cases is is what to look at in terms of stat whether or not they're they're increasing uh, they are of course the total cases are still increasing but they continue to increase at a decreasing rate right you kind of have to look at the der derivative of that um, and I think that's and um, and also there's like Cuomo was saying today that ICU patients are going down. So those are all positive things. But at this point, the market has advanced and I think priced that in a little bit. Um, now we have to hear about when the country is going to reopen. Right. And I think 
um, you know, if we haven't, if we hadn't advanced, which we have, then I would say, okay, maybe, you know, maybe there, um, there's something more positive to the upside. But I think at this point, we have to get, you know, some concrete uh, information about, you know, when, when this country is going to reopen. Because again, I think there's winners and there's some losers. Uh, and a lot more losers right now uh, with the country being shut. All right, guys, so that's it. I'll kind of leave it there for the day. Um, again, I'll kind of show you the rest of the trade blotter. Um, you know, again, I traded SPY a couple times today. The 350, you know, the, um, the the market on close because there's no floor brokers, again, continues to be very whippy. You know, I think this today was more of a MOC uh, sell imbalance, right? But that number's not coming out to 315 these days because, um, you know, and there's, there's less transparency and a more volatility just because those floor brokers are not around. Uh, so um, I think that's what we basically are experiencing um, for now until you know those workers come back so this is what IWM looks like but um, I'm not going to super analyze here uh, but this also ran into a little bit of resistance uh, we didn't really give back too much there right um, you know so just because it's a red bar it's not reversing any of the day's gains it hasn't lost this moving average but again I would err on the, the conservative side uh, at this point again not losing the five or the 20 day moving average but we may spend some time you know spend some more time inside value all right guys that's it for today's recap have a great night and uh, i'll see you tomorrow and again just just overall messages take it day by day you know try not to really get over exposed one way or another and and being that the market is still you know moving so much overnight as well as day to day um, I think it's just better to, to uh, again, the video is for information purposes only, not giving out any advice or recommendations. But what I'm doing is just continuing to position lighter uh, with this volatility and then really trying to be, uh, you know, very nimble and objective uh, during the day and, and following price action. Have a great night, everybody. See you tomorrow.